And now for a look at the starting lineup, let's go to PA announcer Roger Settlemeyer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to McHale Center for the first round of the 1987 MC2A West Region. This afternoon, it's the Broncos from Santa Clara against the Hawkeyes from Iowa. And now the starting lineup from Santa Clara, starting as a forward, number 33, 6'9", a sophomore from Salinas, California, Jens Gordon. And from Iowa, also starting as a forward, number 23, 6'5", a sophomore, from Flint, Michigan, Roy Marble. At the other forward from Santa Clara, number 34, 6 7, a senior from Santa Maria, California, Brian Moody. Also at forward from Iowa, number 54, 7 feet, a senior, Glendale, Arizona, Brad Lojas. Center number 30, 6'9", a junior, San Jose, California, Dan Weiss. Also at center, from Iowa, number 3, 6'7", a senior from San Bernardino, California, Jerry Wright. At one guard, from Santa Clara, number 31, 6'3", a freshman, Long Beach, California, Ase Apia. At one guard from Iowa, number 10, 6'2", a sophomore, Detroit, Michigan, B.J. Armstrong. At the other guard from Santa Clara, number 40, 6'3", a junior from Wheat, California, Chris Lane. At the other guard from Iowa, number 35, 6'6", a senior, Springfield, Illinois, Kevin Gamble. And the coach from Santa Clara, Carol Williams. And the coach from Iowa, Dr. Tom Davis. The offensive players and coaches will return for the opening tip-off after these messages. Iowa and Santa Clara about to meet in this West Regional First Round Contest. The three officials nominated to work in this game. Tom Frame is from Virginia Beach. Fred Carbone is from San Diego. And Jerry Stone is from Richmond, Virginia. Iowa in the white uniform. Santa Clara in red. Bruce, what do you think are the key factors as the game gets underway? Well, a rebounding would be one. Iowa is the number one rebounding team in the country. Santa Clara is a good, strong rebounding team. They need to rebound with Iowa. They can't get beat by that average of 13 rebounds a game that Iowa's been doing to their opponents. I think the other key thing is that Santa Clara needs to control the ball and get the game in the tempo they would like it. They have a couple quick guards, and they have good size in the front line. They can play a half-court game. They can be successful. The Broncos control the tip. That's Brian Moody against the man man defense. And Dan Weiss hits the first shot of the contest. Santa Clara leads to the nothing. Well, Weiss is averaging 10 points a game, four and four rebounds. They get good balance scoring. Both teams really exemplify the team concept. The Broncos begin in a 2-3 zone. Armstrong gets the ball to Gamble, number 35. Chris Lane is checking him. B.J. Armstrong down low to Gary Wright. He can really jump, but he misses here, and Jens Gordon has the rebound for Santa Clara. Well, Santa Clara shows their matchup defense. They'll place the man-to-man, -man and they play a matchup. And they've been very successful with that matchup. We might see it much of the game. They depend on how they do early with it. Rojas was the last to touch the rebound off the missed shot by Ase Apia. And you look at Carol Williams, the dean of college coaches on the West Coast. He coached against him. Right, the grandpa they call it. He's the only grandpa in the league. Moody from in close, can't hit. Rojas wrestles for the rebound. Gordon comes up with it, goes up strong, misses. And there's a foul before Weiss can put the ball in the hoop. So the game's first foul is called by Fred Carbone, and then Gordon will head for the free throw line. Well, Santa Clara is a very aggressive team. They have a reputation through the years. Play hard. Play very, very hard under Coach Carroll Williams and his predecessor, Dick uh, Garibaldi. Dick Garibaldi, I'm sure he's watching. But 
it's been that kind of a team through the years. Rugged players. The front line is all about 220, 225. Then a couple of quick guards. Ken Gordon is a 75% free throw shooter on this season. He led the Broncos in rebounding this year. And he got the first of two free throws to give Santa Clara a great advantage. And now 4 0. These opening minutes of the ball game always important, aren't they? Again, Santa Clara's a 1 2 2. Press about three quarter court. What they're trying to do is get Iowa slow down. Iowa's having trouble with it. And B.J. Armstrong forced into a traveling violation when he was trapped between Brian Moody and Oscar Apia. Well, Santa Clara's not using that trap defense to... Uh, well, ahead of the field, but he can't handle Moody's inbound passing on the turnover. Iowa will take over the turn and throw them up. I say they're not using that trap defense to speed up the game. They're really trying to slow down the game. Have Iowa stop and try to think and what are they going to do? And that's what's happening right now. I was not getting the ball down the floor like they usually like to do. They're going to have to set up and, and early in the ball game get it down there. That's Lohas way outside. B.J. Armstrong and now a set play. Gamble to Lohas to Roy Marble. Very fine. Well, Iowa does a lot of different things. Pete, and that's one thing. They keep Lohas out on the perimeter, seven feet. He's a great passer. You can really see the floor advantage. With it. Gets it down low, and Gordon tries to force a turnover, and the loose ball is picked up by Gamble, who puts it up and in for Iowa's first field goal of the ball game. They fail 4-2. Well, we've seen in the two minutes we played about three or four loose balls at both ends. And that's just how aggressive these teams are. But it indicates also that both teams are trying to get the ball inside. They feel they have to get it inside and take advantage of their strength. Bruce, would you agree that the first two minutes of the ball game have been played at Santa Clara's pace? Right, exactly. If they can keep it that way for the next 18 of this half, uh, they're going to be in good shape at halftime. That's Gordon shooting over right. Brian Moody saves the rebound to Gordon, who loses his footing, and it's taken away by Roy Marble, ahead to B.J. Armstrong. Gamble. Walks. Iowa ties the contest. Okay, yeah, there's, the there's Iowa's game in action right there. Down the floor quickly before you get it back. Gamble on the steal. That's B.J. Armstrong. They really pound the boards. Full court press. Keep it up on the board till they score. Game has changed completely in the next minute. Got to, look, was, got to look at Carol Williams on the bench. One Marble was given Iowa their first lead, six to four. We're three minutes into the ball game. And those are the kind of spurts that Iowa will throw at you. You think you got them under control, and boom. 30 seconds, they got three or four baskets. Jens Gordon goes hard to the basket, but misses. Weiss can't tip it in, but he gets the rebound, shoots over Lohoff, misses, and Gambo has the rebound for the Hawkeyes. Gary Weiss. He was fouled as he spun to get the ball up. First foul of the ball game by Santa Clara is on Dan Weiss, his first. And we'll see it again. Great cross-court pass, bounce. By Armstrong. Had enough on the ball to carry through the defense. Look at the move by Wright. Iowa with a substitution already. As we've indicated at the stop of the show, Iowa will play nine players or ten with no drop in efficiency. Jeff, Gary Wright's free throw percentage not particularly high. About 49% and he misses here. Jeff Moe, uh, who I think we're about to say is the man that checked in. Good shooter. Right. Well, he had a broken hand, right? He didn't start the first 11 games for Iowa. Now he's back in the starting lineup. He's been coming off the bench most of the year, and Horton has started. He hits one of two, and Iowa's lead is 7-4. to four. Any scored basket gives Iowa a chance to press. Full court. They will change it up. Now they're playing low hop on the inbound pass. Really making it tough to get it in. Pia takes the inbound pass, gets it ahead to Chris Williams. Yeah. Drives on right and misses, and it's an offensive foul. Oh, say a Pia. Well, Gary Wright's a great athlete at 6'7". He might be a little bigger than 6'7", but they're coming at him two on one. And he takes that charge. He's a good safety man. He's got the football skills you have to have for a safety player. And that's what he does in the back of that zone press. Anybody that gets by, he's got to take on two and three players very, very often. He's got that kind of quickness to do that. The Hawkeyes have the ball leading by three with 16 and a half minutes to play in the first half. That's Jeff Moe shooting from three-point range and hitting. The best three-point shooter in the Big Ten. Well, that may be kind of interesting to fans around the country. You hear Steve Alford from Indiana, a great three-point shooter, but Jeff Moe is the best in the Big Ten. He had him out in the last two ball games of the season. 6-4. That's a Pia on the perimeter for Santa Clara. The White. 
again. Weiss at 6'9 to Apia. He's a freshman to Chris Lane, a junior. Rebound Roy Marble to Armstrong. The Hawkeyes want to run. A chance to see the Santa Clara flex on that as Iowa plays the man-to-man -man defense. Iowa will play both. Philosophically, both teams uh, alike in a lot of ways. That's Roy Marble hitting. It's his second field goal, and Iowa's lead is now 12-4. And we have a timeout on the floor, 15.43 to go in the first half. The score, Iowa 12, Santa Clara 4. We're coming right back to the... Bruce, Santa Clara scored the first two baskets of this ball game. Then what happened? 12-0 well, in that last four-minute stretch, and that's just the way Iowa plays, and that's what's going to happen to you. Iowa's got a whole new team in there right now. And Santa Clara turns the ball over on the inbounds pass, so Iowa will take over, and there's Carol Williams on the sidelines in the 24th season at Santa Clara. Fifth turnover against the Broncos. Iowa's turned it over only once. Al Lorenzen will put the ball in play at the baseline. Help, help. To Gamble, he's the only starter back. Uh, he and uh, Marble still on the floor. Bill Jones has the ball. He's one of the new entrants into the ball game, along with Lorenzo and Ed Horton. Well, number 14, Bill Jones at 6'7". He's the point guard now for Armstrong at 6'2". Now they're playing Gamble. Lorenzo, 14 to 4. Iowa leads by 10. Well, Lorenzo was a starter last year. Now he's coming off the bench. Jeff Moe has been a starter the last couple of years. Great, great depth on this University of Iowa Hawkeye basketball team. The ball is tipped away and recovered by Roy Marble. Last five times, Santa Clara has not gotten the ball across midcourt. In fact, they've only got inbounds twice. That's Marble. Shooting over Gordon. Roy Marble scores again. He has six points in the contest. And Iowa leads 16 to 4. Santa Clara has brought all five players. Burley calls for an offensive foul. He took the ball in the backcourt and drove hard to the basket to try to beat the press. Well, it's really tough. The last two times Santa Clara's gotten the ball across half court, they've taken it for the lay-in on a drive, and they've picked up a charging foul on both occasions. So they really haven't hit a shot since that first two minutes of the game. Carol Williams changing defenses from the Santa Clara sideline. That's Gamble getting the ball to Marble for a three-point attempt. Rebound Chris Lane. He's a junior from Little Weed, California. That's near the Oregon border. Started by Gamble. Loses his footing. He loses the ball. Kevin Gamble with Chris Lane to beat. Beat him. Three field goals for Kevin Gamble. And Iowa leads by a 14. So Santa Clara calls another timeout. 14-15 to go in the first half. What's the score? Iowa 18. Santa Clara 4. There's a timeout on the court. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for the NCAA championships. Along with Bruce, Mar Bruce Larson, I'm Pete Solomon at McHale Center in Tucson, where Santa Clara has been outscored 18 to nothing after scoring the first two field goals in the ball game. Iowa leading 18 to four, with 13:58 to play in the first half. Well, that's the first time in that period of time they've gotten the ball across midcourt or down in the scoring area without losing it. Weiss's missed shot was rebounded by Jeff Moe, and that's Bill Jones on the run for the Hawkeyes. They've been outscored 18 to nothing in the last five minutes. Mo misses the three-point attempt, but Roy Marble is right there for the offensive rebound, and he puts it back up and in. Marble with eight points. And the Hawkeyes lead by 16. Well, you got a chance to see Roy Marble's great quickness. He took it up through the pack. Intercepted by Bill Jones. Six-seven point guard. Jones misses. Mo has the rebound. And he pulls it back out to reset the offense. That's Bill Jones picked up by David Aaron, who checked in last time out for Santa Clara. Line pass to Marble on the baseline. Ed Horton. He just muscled his way in for his first field goal, didn't he? Well, you get to see some of that power. Ed Horton's about 6'8 or 9, 225 pounds. Lorenzen guarding the ball out of bounds. 6'7 or 8, and about 220. 
and they still move very well. James Gordon goes high, scores the basket, and draws the foul from Ed Horton. Great move by James Gordon, the uh, sophomore, all most valuable player in the West Coast Athletic Conference tournament. Just starting to come along. 6'9", about 220, took the ball right at him. Great move and still picks up the foul. Gordon led the Broncos in scoring on 10 occasions this season and in rebounding on 18. And on the sideline, Carol Williams is a quick word for Dan Weiss. And it's like they're discussing the full court press. Well, Weiss and uh, Moody don't have the quickness that, the, that the Gordon does. So Gordon's able to operate a little better against that Iowa quickness. The Iowa 6, 8, and 9 players are so quick. Gordon completed the three-point play. Now Gamble at the other end scores. Kevin Gamble has four field goals, and Iowa leads 24 to 7. Great example of transition at his best. Curley flirted with a walk. In fact, he did walk. Mitch Burley heads down to the defensive end, and Osei Apia checks back in. Will wants to walk again here, Bruce. Well, the kind of game that's being played right now, it's a very up-tempo game, and Santa Clara really isn't used to running up and down the floor and getting those kind of shots, maybe one-on-one -on -one and, and two-on-one. They're used to working five-on-five. -five. So I was dictating the kind of game that's being played, and it's being played at the kind of pace that suits Iowa the best. Horvath forced the interception. Apia comes up with it, and he has the ball stripped, but Jeff Moe had to foul to do it. The foul on Moe is his first, and the third on the Iowa ball club. Jeff Moe, out of Indianapolis, a junior, and there's Tom Davis in his first year at Iowa. You know, he didn't exactly inherit a bad ball club from George Raveling, but Iowa is seven and a half games better than they were a year ago. Right, with the same players. You'd have to say, if you looked at that Iowa team, and knowing the background of Coach Tom Davis. If Tom Davis could recruit the kind of players he wanted to, he'd recruit exactly the kind of players he's got. Apia touched it last. It'll be Iowa's ball in the front court with 12-19 to play in the first half, and the Hawkeyes enjoying a 24-7 advantage. Now Chris Lane checks back in for the Santa Clara Ball Club. Lane, excellent football player in high school. He was the quarterback in a free safety. Well, he had some arthroscopic surgery, I think, about a year ago, and uh, that could have, uh, might bother him a little bit. He's got a wrap. He walked on. He came to Santa Clara on an academic scholarship. Gary Wright for Iowa, the Lohan to Armstrong. Marvel is the Hawkeyes work the perimeter against, it looks like a matchup zone, right? It did. It's a little flex. Now, they run the flex also. The, uh, the granddaddy of the flex is Carol uh, Williams, the Santa Clara coach. He's worked with it for years and years. But Iowa does, they run it with their inside people along the baseline. You'll see those three inside people change deep on the baseline. So we could look for a lot of picks in that area. And guys popping up to the free throw line area too as well, right? They don't run their guards down like most flex teams do. B.J. Armstrong takes the ball to the corner, then finds Gary White. Right has nowhere to go with it. Shoots, scores, it's waved off. It's a jump ball. The possession arrow points to Iowa. It looked like he traveled on the call, and we'll have to see it here. Takes the ball to the basket. Well, Santa Clara player might have hit it, so he had a chance then to recover coming down. Brad Lohan to put the ball in play as Dan Weiss re-enters the Santa Clara lineup. That's Juan Marble with the ball. DJ Armstrong is the point guard. Gary Wright, who began his college career at Southern Cal. There's the baseline pick. Brad Rojas rams it home. His first field goal of the afternoon. Iowa leads 26 to 7. 19 points represents their biggest lead for the 11, 11 to go in the first half. Santa Clara shooting 14%. Now they've only shot 48% uh, during the year. Iowa's one of the better field goal shooting teams in the country. 52%. About, yeah, 52. And uh, I was, uh, Santa Clara is really going to have to shoot a good percentage to, to compete with the Hawks. Talked about the flex. Moody missed the jumper coming off the flex. And with Iowa's great rebounding advantage, Santa Clara's getting one shot at the offensive end. Roy Marble shows his great athletic ability. He's the first player in the game in double figures. He has 10 points, and Iowa leads 28-7. to seven. That was a baseline flex, and Marble so quick coming off that screen by that postman, deep under the basket, then moving up into the paint and using his maneuverability to get those shots away against the bigger people. Down low, Moody goes up and draws the foul. Marble collided with him, and Marble commits his first foul. 
fourth against the Iowa ball club. Here you get to see the flex screen. No, you didn't get to see it. Uh, coming off the flex, open for the layup. Both teams have had good shot position under the basket. Santa Clara hasn't been able to get theirs away, and Iowa has. So they run their man offense very well. Both teams have played quite a bit of man defense so far. Ryan Moody making his 18th straight start after being a reserve for his first three and a half years at Santa Clara, and he misses the first or two. He's kind of come along, had a chance to play early in the season, and then just hung on to his spot. A good, tough player. Considered the team's most improved player. In fact, he hits one of two. Iowa's lead is now 28 to 8. Then 25 to play in the first half, and Moody heads to the sideline. You know, the NCAA scores never fail to amaze us. How about Southwest Missouri, 65, Clemson, 60, a final in the Southeast region. Santa Clara will take over here with 10 16 to play in the half. Look at Gary Wright. Purdue, Whack Northeast, 104 to 95. Well, the Big Ten's lost one to Illinois in kind of an upset, but Purdue and Indiana move on, and it looks like Iowa's on their way here if they can maintain the pace they're playing. Apia uh, uh, had that ball tipped. No, it was not tipped. Thrown away, and Iowa will take take over after yet another turnover. What do you mean, kind of an upset, Bruce? Did you have Austin P in the pool? Time out. No, I didn't. There's Carol Williams. I was I picked out West Missouri. They're a good ball club. I thought they could beat Clemson. We have a timeout on the floor. 10:15 to go in the half. It's Iowa 28, Santa Clara 8. We'll be right back. Clara 28 to 8 with 10 15 to go in the half. Perky the uh, Hawkeye is here. Santa Clara 1 and 4 against current Big Ten members. They beat Ohio State back in 1983. Iowa is 9 and 1 against current members of the West Coast Athletic Conference. They beat Portland and Loyola Marymount this year. Look at the difference in the field goal percentage, Bruce. It's that and the turnover figures is a big statistic so far. Well, and the scoring pace is 28 points halfway through, so Iowa is on their pace. They've scored in the 107 times. Santa Clara's only been over 90 once. They've only been in the 80s and six. So it's not the kind of game that Santa Clara would like to be playing right now. And the Could Bronco, change. Broncos have turned it over 12 times. Iowa only three. That's had a big impact as well. well Santa Clara's averaged about 16 turnovers a game. They're well on their way to uh, getting over that average. Lojas to Moe to Armstrong. Jeff Moe, that's Kevin Gamble. Brad Lohans, who's from the state of Arizona, Glendale, northwest of Phoenix. Gamble eyes the hoop and delivers. Gamble, Gamble's been playing better of late for Iowa. And, and Iowa uh, leads 30 to 8, Bruce. Helps her outside shooting when he's uh, maybe, maybe that would be one area. Maybe they aren't as strong as some other teams, but with Moe and Gamble now playing better in marble, they're all right on the perimeter. And Lohans is a good perimeter shooter at seven feet. We haven't seen him there yet, but I think he'll be there before the night's over. Marble and Gamble have accounted for two-thirds of Iowa's scoring as Santa Clara turns it over for a 13th time. Each player, Marble and Gamble, have each scored 10 as Carol Williams looks on. Iowa really now is playing what we call a soft defense or a one defense. They're just letting Santa Clara run their offense and then giving them plenty of trouble when even they catch the ball in, in scoring area. They haven't been able to do it. And you get a quick look at Mitch Burley, who has re-entered the game for Santa Clara. He's number 22. That's Gary Wright to B.J. Armstrong. Well, 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 for coaches who are interested in the flex, here you're seeing both teams now. This is the full flex I was running. They don't usually run their guards, but with Bo a little bigger, they can run him on the full flex and get him down into the baseline. Craig McPherson comes up with a loose ball, and Chris Lane advances it into the front court for the Santa Clara ball club. Burley is a good shooter. But he misses here. Lojas slaps the ball out of bounds. Santa Clara will keep it. Both teams got great balance. And here's Burley coming off the bench in Horvath. The Burley's at 9.9 .9 points a game. So that's really helped both clubs through the season. They, they really are the team concept uh, of both teams. And the philosophy of the coaches is, is very evident as you watch the ball game. And you get a look at Roy Marble, who has 10 points in the contest and five rebounds as well. I was certainly getting more of a contribution out of their bench so far in this contest. Well, that's normal for the year. They've outscored their opponents by some fabulous margin on the bench. 25 points, uh, an average on the bench from the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. And seven to nothing so far today. Chris Lane from the free throw line. 
Weiss can't handle the rebound. It rolls out of bounds, and Iowa will put the ball in play, leading 30 to 8 with 8.23 to go in the first half. Now, when you're down 22 points, you know, you're getting good shots, but you got to hit them. You know, you're not hitting them, and it just gets tougher and tougher mentally for Santa Clara. They can't run much better offense and get much better shots. They just have to get the ball down a little bit. Lorenzen enters it low to Moe. Jeff Moe with some muscle, can't get the shot to fall, and as Craig McPherson pulls down the rebound, he's whacked. I think Al Lorenzen guilty of the foul. He's headed down the other way. That's the first foul on Lorenzen and number six on the team. Well, people familiar with basketball in the West have seen Tom Davis's team through the years, and there's Carol Williams. 17 years at Santa Clara, and seven years before that as an assistant to Dick Garibaldi, so he knows the program very, very well. That's Carol Williams, 24 years on the Santa Clara campus. And Tom Davis has coached everywhere in the East at Boston College. West at Stanford and now in the Big Ten with Iowa where he was coach of the year this year. Well, Santa Clara and Stanford are very close together, so the coaches are very familiar. They didn't play each other very often, only once, and uh, Carol Williams beat the Stanford team a couple, three years ago. McPherson on the baseline. That shot hit nothing, and Gary Wright pulls it down. Armstrong on the run. B.J. Armstrong gives Iowa a 32 to 8 advantage. That's his first field goal. McPherson takes the inbounds pass and finds Chris Lane. Is it difficult, Bruce, to get into your offense when you break the press? You work so hard to break it, and then you have to get right. back in and run your stuff? And I think what uh, Santa Clara's done is you saw Lane, they beat the press, but rather than take the ball to the basket, he pulled up and let all his teammates get down. Now, that's a good way to handle that if you're ahead. Gary right off balance. Rebound Lorenzen. He goes up strong and scores. But where you're scrambling from behind, you need to attack now. The only way you're going to catch up, you're not going to catch up keeping the ball. Intercepted by B.J. Armstrong. Iowa leading 34 to 8. Has the ball again. That's 14 turnovers in this half. 16 has been their average. Lorenzen under double team pressure. And the foul is called by official Tom Frame. 6.37 to go in the half. First, Iowa leading 34 to 8. Common foul on Chris Lane, his first, and the team's fourth. Well, the Iowa press has really been the early factor. They have not handled the press at all, so it doesn't make much difference whether they shoot well or they rebound well. That's marble. And Iowa's got all their shots right there. So that helps. That, that 71% is probably up to 81. Iowa 36, Santa Clara 8. And we have 6.20 to go in the half. And Lorenzen intercepts the ball to Marble. Great pass to Gamble. Gamble has 12. The Hawkeyes lead by 30. Much to the delight of these people who made the trip from Iowa City. It's good quickness in the Iowa big players. Now, they're playing a slow team. Uh, we're granted that. And the Big Ten is a much more up-tempo game than the West Coast Athletic Conference. But you here you see that quickness. You, it's hard to teach quickness in basketball. Uh, you can recruit it, and you can improve on it. And Iowa's got some of those that have been recruited. And I think with the up-tempo game that Coach Tom Davis espouses, that's helped their quickness. They've improved it. Bill Jones committed the last foul, his first, but now Iowa is over the limit with 6.08 to go in the half. Chris Lane on the free throw line. He's making his 43rd straight start, and he hits the front end of a one and one. Santa Clara was stuck on eight for a long time. Oh, they were. 38 to nine. Just tough getting on track. See, nobody in their league plays like this. Well, nobody in the country really plays like this. Iowa, I suppose the closest would be three teams that are in this region. Oklahoma and UNLV. Now the Hawkeyes turn the ball over on Bill Jones' long pass. So Santa Clara will put the ball in play, trailing by 28. 6.04 to go in the half. And that's Chris Lane, number 40, in the Santa Clara backcourt. Apia takes the inbounds pass. And he's double team. That's Moody, a frontcourt player, helping out with the press to Lane to Apia. Out of Long Beach, California, just a freshman. Lane, a junior from Weed, California, guarded by Gamble. Brian Moody. James Gordon's been pretty quiet. He has. Apia misses. Al Lorenzen has the rebound for Iowa. Santa Clara's getting one shot at the offensive end. Well, Iowa is the top rebounding team in the nation. They out-rebound their opponents by 13. 
Yeah, that's exceptional. Brian Moody was on Roy Marble's back. The foul on Moody is his first and only the fifth team foul on the Santa Clara ball club. We saw the turnover margin a minute ago. That may be the single biggest factor in the ball game so far. What do you think? Well, I, with the press, uh, and the tur yeah, I think you're right in that regard, Pete, that uh, it doesn't really... Al Lorenzen traveled before he can make a power move under the hoop. So Santa Clara will take over down by 28 with 528 to go in the first half. Al Lorenzen was Mr. Basketball in Iowa a few years ago. Well, they got a couple of Mr. Basketballs. Ed Horton right there that you can see. Mr. Basketball in Illinois. The Iowa theme this year is Horton and Gamble. They're from the same high school team. Three of the Illinois. last four national winners have been at, team, at players from the same high school team. Well, they think that's their luck charm. They go into the tournament having won four in a row. Bill Jones ties up Jens Gordon and on the alternate held ball. Santa Clara will retain possession. Jones at 6'7 really has those long arms, doesn't he? Yeah, a 6'7 point guard. He can move all those Iowa Hawkeyes on the court right now from 6'5 Marble to 6'9 and 6'8 Horton. And there's muscle there, and there's size, and there's quickness. You don't see that often. Apia makes a nice move but can't hit, and the rebound scrambled for, and there's Al Lorenzen coming up with it. Al Lorenzen get a lot of playing time this uh, half, more so than Lohaus. He's playing better than Lohaus has her. Horton dishes it off to Marble. One Marble delivers again. He has 14 points here in the first half. And his team, Iowa, leads 40 to 10 with 440 to go in the half. Double team pressure again in the backcourt, and his wife dishes the ball off. Marble and Lorenzen were right there, and one of them tagged with a foul. But Carbone's going to make the call. Well, Marble gave a great exhibition or a clinic on shooting the jump shot. He's so quick. He goes up into the pack of those 6'8 and 6'9 guys and straight up and full extension. Foul on Gamble. You saw Tom Davis who's just sent in Brad Lojas returning to the lineup along with B.J. Armstrong. Weiss on the free throw line. And he misses the front end of the one and one, but Brian Moody is there for the rebound to Gordon. Gordon misses and look at Horton snap that rebound. Everything seems to be on the back of the rim. Ed Horton. Bodies everywhere. Stolen by Chris Lane. It's one on two. What a move. Chris Lane with an excellent move. He has his fourth point of the game. And Iowa now leads 40 to 12. Something for the Santa Clara fans to get excited about, though. Ryan Moody called for the foul as he was trying to affect that trap. The foul on Moody is his second. Well, there you got a chance to see Iowa does something a little different than most teams around the country also. They use big Brad Lowhouse as a guard against the press. Because he sees the floor so well. Trying to utilize that great size, seven feet, and then when he raises the ball above his arms, of course, he's got another couple three feet so he can see open people. Of course, that's Roland Horvath, who's just checked in for Santa Clara. Number 23 is a junior from Redondo Beach, California. He's played in junior college for the last two years at El Camino. A good player. Outstanding skills. He's done a very good job for uh, Santa Clara coming off the bench. Gambles and Moe to Horton. Marble. Uh, to uh, Horton. Jeff Moe. Back to Horton. Down low to Lohaus. That's his second jam. And his second field goal. Iowa's lead is 42 to 12. That ties their biggest advantage of the first half. Three and a half minutes to go in the half. Jens Gordon. Iowa now leads 42 to 14 with 320 to go in the half. Jens Gordon, 6'9", showed that he can shoot that short jump. Owen drew some oohs and ahs. Horton's second field goal. Iowa leads 44 to 14. It just seems like Santa Clara has to work so hard for every basket. And Iowa's able to get that and get the ball inside so easily. That's a sophomore. People are going to have to look at him for a couple more years. Lane with a very aggressive drive to the hoop. He has six points in the game, and Iowa's lead is 44 to 16. Armstrong brings it back in a hurry. Ball from three-point range. That's his second three-pointer. He has six points in the ball game, and Iowa leads 47 to 16, their biggest lead. Well, the last part of the season, he had a streak of 11 out of 13 three-pointers. 
whistle before the shot. Good look at Jeff Moe. He's an aggressive player. Oh, guilty of the foul. His second. And Chris Lane will head for the free throw line where he's two for two so far this afternoon. He had 12 points, 12 rebounds, and nine assists against St. Mary's this season. Almost a triple-double. That's a great performance. So he can do some things. He's got another year for the Bronx. Very young team. This will be a great experience for them. Playing this kind of team in Iowa. That's Craig McPherson returning to the lineup, giving Jens Gordon his first rest. Gordon leaves with seven points. You know, you talk about this being a great experience for the Santa Clara team. You know, before the season got underway, Santa Clara was optimistic, but they felt they were really a year away from being a real contender in the WCAC. All right, they'll have everybody the Moody back for next year. And Moody wasn't even projected to help them much this year. Tipped by Lane, recovered by Kyle Larson, the 54, who just checked into the lineup. And Santa Clara has the ball trailing 47 to 18. You see the time remaining, just over two minutes in the first half. Well, the press was effective that time. Created a turnover, and that was Lohas that threw the bad pass, trying to get it inside in the middle of the zone. That's McPherson, guarded by Wright. Carl Larson is 6'11", all in Parvath. And they're pretty inexperienced players. Coach Moody felt that uh, if they have to go to their bench inside, they're in a little trouble because they don't have any experience. And backup help for uh, Gordon and Weiss and Moody. Apia missed the shot, then was got the rebound and was fouled by Armstrong. You saw Weiss check back into the game, and that's Carl Larson heading for the sideline for Santa Clara. The foul on Armstrong, his first, and Iowa has been over the limit for about five minutes. That's Michael Reeves, number 11, checking in for the Iowa ball club. I say Apia on the free throw line for the first time this afternoon. Saw action in every game as a freshman. This is the 14th start. He misses the front end of the one and one, and Gary Wright collects the rebound. And they had him coming off the bench early in the year, and now they've switched and uh, got him in and used Burley and Horvath off the bench. A little more experience. Here's that flex offense you were talking about. Yeah, they're setting it up. Here they come with the first cutter down the baseline. Back out around the horn. Rojas, Marble, Bill Jones. On the run, Michael Reeves has his first field goal, and Iowa's lead is 49 to 18, equaling their biggest margin in the first half. Lane. McPherson missed the stop. Lohas picks the rebound up off the floor and gets it ahead to Marble. He's been just as good as advertised, hasn't he? He has in this ball game. He's been playing better this uh, last part of the season. Now Wright drops the ball out of bounds. 103 remaining to be played in the half, and Santa Clara will take over, trailing 49 to 18. I think we had a call, a foul call at the same time down there, just right. before the out of bounds play. Santa Clara still no scoring from the bench. Foul was on Bill Jones, Bruce his second. And a one-and-one one situation for Chris Lane. Roy Marble, 14 points. That's why Carol Williams three, six rebounds and two assists. So he's been doing it all, as we indicated at the top of the show. He's the key man for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And you saw the Bronco bench. This has to be their worst nightmare coming through. Apia hits the front end of the one-and-one. Santa Clara didn't win more than two games in a row all season until they got to the WCAC tournament, first ever. And then they whacked Portland, defeated St. Mary's and Pepperdine, and here they are in the NCAA tournament. In fact, the Portland win was on the road. Portland beat them twice during the year. Just to show you the kind of improvement that Santa Clara has made, Portland beat them twice, home and home. And that's why Portland got to play the first game of the tournament on their home court. And Santa Clara beat them 90-61. to 61. Defensive foul drawn by Bill Jones on Apia, his second. And with 54 seconds to play in the half, the Santa Clara club goes over the limit. You know, Santa Clara's been a little effective with that print. They just haven't had a chance to use it very often. Every time they've had a chance to use it, it's kind of slowed Iowa down, and they've had to regroup and, and attack it. But the kind of a game it's been, the, the turnovers on the press that Iowa has thrown against Santa Clara has kept Santa Clara from getting the ball down. If Santa Clara could have scored, 
They had a chance to get in their press and slow Iowa down. I think it'd be a much, much different ball game than it has been so far. You saw Bill Jones at the front end of a one and one. And here's Jens Gordon returning to the lineup for the Santa Clara Ball Club. And Al Lorenzen, number 44, back on the floor for Iowa. You know, if the Iowa team has an Achilles heel looking down through the tournament now, as a team, the Hawkeyes shoot about 67% from the free throw line. That could come back to haunt them, don't think? Well, that might be the only weakness they go. And you can look at everything else. I, I think you're going to have some weakness someplace, and maybe if you're going to have it. Their starters aren't too bad. The guys that are on the free throw line a lot, like Marble and uh, Lojas, Horton and Wright aren't great, and they get fouled quite a bit. But uh, when you look at free throws, those people around the line are important uh, most of the time, the kind of percentage they have. Santa Clara down by 31, has the ball. As you see, the time remaining in the half, less than 40 seconds and 30 seconds on the shot clock. And Iowa in the zone. Now, that's the first time they played some zone, a 1-2-2. Two, two. They match up from it. Roland Horvath. Santa Clara now trails 51 to 22. And the check clock is off now. Check the out, I was last possession. Santa Clara was real effective with this uh, three-quarter court pressure, half court 1-2-2 two, two against Portland. Jones has the rebound from Marble. And the horn sounds ending the first half. Carol Williams and the Santa Clara Ball Club heading for the dressing room, trailing by a bunch. They scored the first two baskets of the ball game, and the roof fell in. Well, it did, and it's been Iowa's game the way Iowa wants to play. They've controlled the tempo, they've determined the tempo, and when you can play the kind of basketball game you want to play as a team, you should be more effective, and that's what's happened here in this first ball game in this West Southwest uh, Regional. So Iowa, 20 minutes away from advancing in this West Regional, and that's the end of the first half with the score, Iowa 51, Santa Clara 22. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. Back at McHale Center in Tucson, Iowa has a big lead over Santa Clara, 51 to 22, along with Bruce Larson. I'm Pete Solomon, and uh, the ball game had an unusual start, Bruce, in the respect that Santa Clara jumped right off to a two-basket lead, and suddenly Iowa exploded. How come? Well, I think as, you, as they went in the ball game, Santa Clara wanted to control the tempo, slow it down, get good shots, and uh, keep Iowa from running up and down the court. They wanted to play half-court offense. In the first two minutes, they were really able to do that. But then as characteristic of the Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, as their press became more and more effective and Santa Clara couldn't get the ball across half court, then of course the game turned in two minutes. It went from a half court game to a full court game. It really went a half court game on the other end, on the Santa Clara's game. So that really made it tough. First, let's take a look at the numbers here in the first half and look at Santa Clara's shooting percentage and the turnover margin was a big factor, which we, uh, we don't have here. Well, the, the combination of the two, the turnovers, and then Iowa converting the turnovers to 72% shooting. You know, two out of every three shots they took went in the basket. Santa Clara, on the other hand, 25%. They're great from the free throw line, but that's not enough. We Santa Clara, their two big scorers, Lane and Gordon, with eight and seven. That's uh, kind of characteristic, but they didn't get much help from Weiss and Apea. Marble with 14, Gamble 12, Moe 6, and again, off the bench, Iowa outscored the... Uh, uh, Santa Clara by that 25 point margin that they've been averaging during the year. So the great bench play of Iowa and their quicker athletes and their bigger size uh, have been a factor in this first half. Bruce, we alerted to the, uh, alluded I should say to the turnovers. Uh, Santa Clara turned it over 15 times and as you mentioned they've been averaging 16 turnovers a game this season and Iowa turned the ball over only eight. Dr. Tom Davis, he has his PhD. Six years at Lafayette, five years as a head coach at Boston College, four years at Stanford, and Big Ten Coach of the Year in his first season at Iowa. Well, he started out in the Midwest, at high school in Illinois, and then Wisconsin, and uh, then went to Maryland as a, a PhD candidate, did some uh, graduate assistant work, and then to American University as an assistant, and then to Lafayette, as you mentioned. And he's had great success at all of places he's been. Iowa Stanford, puts the ball. probably the least. Iowa puts the ball in play to start the second half, and that's Gary Wright missing the jam, but he takes it right back, puts it up, misses, and draws the foul. 
Uh, Wright is one of those players that can just leap out of the gym. He's a college graduate, incidentally, a fifth year senior, taking about 12 hours of extra academic courses. Well, he's a transfer from USC, and when George Robbins took the job, he transferred to uh, Iowa, and then George Robbins has gone back to USC. He'd probably like to have him this year. We saw the SC club play a couple times. Uh, he's a special kind of player, very quick. You talked about his jumping ability, but he's what we call a quick jumper. He's up there and got his work done before the other guys have gotten off the floor. Of course, Brian Moody's foul was his third, and the first by anybody here in the second half. Wright hits one of two from the free throw line, and Iowa's lead is 52 to 22. Their biggest lead of the first half was 31. And Coach Williams was worried about uh, Gordon fouling out. He's fouled out in nine games, and he felt if he did that, they'd be in trouble. But Moody now is in trouble. And Gamble draws a foul after the Iowa press nets yet another turnover. So Kevin Gamble will go to the free throw line after Osei Apia commits his third foul. Well, then you look at where the first four shots or five shots have been taken in this half are in the paint. Iowa's got a good perimeter shooting team, but they haven't had to shoot on the perimeter. Everything is in the paint. And so it's exemplified in their shooting percentage at 72. Kevin Gamble's first trip to the free throw line, and he has his 13th point. Honorable mention, all Big Ten selection, whose field goal with four seconds to go beat Ohio State in Columbus this year. Neither team has an all-conference player. Iowa has two bench performers that are honorable mention, all-conference players. So you can imagine the kind of depth they have. And Santa Clara doesn't even have a West Coast Athletic Conference Player of the Week. A testimony to the balance of both squads, don't you agree? Right. No, the team concept. Brian Moody to James Gordon. Gordon has his third field goal. He has nine points in the ball game, and Iowa's lead is 54 to 24. Well, Gordon's close to his average, and that's why the coaches like him. Just the thing you saw there, shooting that uh, short 15 footer, and then he's able to shoot inside as well. BJ Armstrong's three pointer rims out, but there's Roy Marble for another offensive rebound. We talked about Iowa's rebounding prowess, and they really are Tigers on the offensive board. That's true. Lojas has been their most consistent rebounder for the year. And he's also been their best offensive rebounder. He's led the club in rebounding 20 times. Intercepted by Chris Lane. Lane's third field goal, he has 10 points in the ball game, now cuts the deficit to 54 to 26. Iowa has the lead and the ball, and we're about a minute and a half into the second half. Roland Horvath will be in for the Broncos next time there's a dead ball. There's Lohawk playing out on the perimeter. I think if Santa Clara could have done just what they did there throughout the ball game. If they have done a better job against uh, Iowa's press. And their press has really slowed Iowa down. Gary Wright with a great move for his first field goal of the afternoon. And Iowa leads by 30. Smooth. Well, there's quickness. You know, you can't teach quickness, and uh, they showed it there. And Gamble, after a turnover, scores again. He has seven field goals and two free throws. Iowa's lead is 58 to 26. I would say that's the thing that the Iowa coach had to be pleased with, that the Gamble is playing a little bit better than he did toward uh, this last part of the season. He's a senior, their leader, 6'6". Six, six. Good leader, plays all over the floor for them. Moody from three-point range comes up short. B.J. Armstrong ahead to Marble. An emphatic slam dunk. He has 16 in the game, and Iowa has their biggest lead, uh, 50 to 26. Bruce, let's not fool anybody here. This game has been out of hand for a while. What can Iowa do in the second half to learn things or develop things that might help them later on in the tournament? Well, I think the way they play, they're going to continue to press, even though they say, why are they pressing? Because they're winning by 40 points. But you've got to do things by instinct. And you pull off the press, that isn't what they do. You know, whether they're behind or ahead, that's the game plan. And so I don't think they're going to change that any. They've got to play with that up-tempo, and hopefully they'll get some good running and handle the ball off the break, and that should help them in games to come. We saw Craig McPherson here replaces Dan Weiss in the Santa Clara lineup as Brad Lohaus goes to the free throw line. Second team all Big Ten, also an all-district five performer this season, and he is the first of two. 
and I'm sure the coaches, you know, really don't want to pour it on, but then you got to think about your own ball club and, and where you're going. And it might hurt you more to pull them back and uh, handle the ball more and use the clock, and that's not the way you play. 16.48 remaining to be played in the ball game. There's the timeout on the score. Uh, on the court with the score. Iowa 62, Santa Clara 26. We're coming right back. Santa Clara leaves the huddle, trailing Iowa 62 to 26 in this first round West contest. As Carol Williams has a word with uh, Fred Carbone, one of the officials. Look at the bench scoring. Talk about Iowa's depth. Uh, they have it on display again today. Well, that's been characteristic. Iowa has not been out-rebounded by one team all year. They have not been outscored on the bench by any team. So those are two characteristics and two strengths that this Iowa basketball team has. As we look at the stats, early in the second half, 18 turnovers for Santa Clara. That's two over their average. Nine for Iowa. 11 rebounds for Santa Clara. 21 for Iowa. Iowa out-rebounds their opponents by 13 a game. They're almost on pace right here. 30% shooting for Santa Clara. They shoot 44% for the year, or 48. Iowa, 52% shooting basketball team, are really going downhill. They're down to 68 right now. They end at halftime at 72. Gary Wright just guilty of a grabbing foul, his first in the first against the Hawkeyes in the second half. So on the common foul, Lane tries to get it in play, and it's slapped out of bounds. And uh, Santa Clara will try it again from the baseline. 16-33 to go in the contest, and Iowa enjoys the big margin. Horvath came down the lane looking for the inbound pass, but Lane couldn't get it to him. It was slapped away, and they'll try it again. Chris Lane at 6-3, lobs the ball outside to Apia. The ball is tipped out of bounds by Roy Marble, and Santa Clara will put it in from the sideline. The winner of this game, Bruce, takes on the winner of the Arizona-Texas El Paso contest. Iowa and Arizona have already met this year in February. Iowa came in and won by nine. Had to come from behind to do it over the Wildcats. It did. Excellent ball game. And uh, their quickness was kind of evident. Uh... Apia misses. Gordon misses the foul. Gets knocked to the floor. And now here's an Iowa foul as McPherson is knocked down as well. We'll see it all again here. I'm sure Santa Clara is going to give a lot of their players some playing time in this tournament as they prepare for next year. McPherson is a, nice, a young player who also has been hurt much of the year, and he's hurt the depth of the Santa Clara ball club. But you can see he's a nice, mobile individual, lanky, and uh, a fair outside shooter. So they've got some good people coming back. Last foul on Gary Wright, his third. That's Sophia. And he has... His first field goal, four points in the ball game. Iowa's lead is 63 to 28, and Kevin Gamble extends that lead. Two passes and one dribble. The ball is inbounded and down the court. Transition at its best right there. And 18 points for Gamble. So even when you score, Santa Clara scores, they can't get back on defense. Iowa just comes right back at you. Bruce, this is Kevin Gamble's 17th double finger game of the season. Jens Gordon. Iowa's lead 64 to 30. That's Lowhouse from three-point range. Marble pulled down the rebound, then lost the handle on it. There you saw Brad Lowe. He's a good free-throw, three-point shooter, I say. Free-throw, a three-point shooter. Left-hander, seven feet. And against a better and a tougher ball game, you will see that shot much more often. We saw it when Arizona played here, and Iowa played Arizona here earlier. Coming down as the trailer, transition. Rather than go down deep and post up, he'll hold up, get that shot in the three-point area, and if he can't get it, then he'll go down deep. With that miss, Bruce, he's 22 for 65. Three-point range. Chris Lane scores for the Broncos to cut the deficit to 64 to 32. We're five minutes into the second half. B.J. Armstrong. They haven't indicated whether they're going to count that or not. Uh, Split crew of officials as Iowa makes wholesale substitutions. And let's see if the basket will stand. Well, that's probably all uh, that the Iowa starters are going to get to play today. But they really don't have a starting team. The people on the floor right now, Jones and Lorenzen and Moe and Horton, and Reeves, I think outside of Reeves, they've all started at some time in their Iowa career. Horton was a starter much of this year. 
Bruce, that's Chris Lane. He just committed his fourth foul, a common foul occurred before the shot. Four on the Santa Clara team, and Al Lorenzen puts the ball in play for Iowa. Bounces it in to Ed Horton, and we'll check this Iowa unit. Michael Reeves and Bill Jones on the back line with Al Lorenzen and uh, Ed Horton. And uh, Jeff Moe is sort of a swing man and a great shooter playing out on the perimeter right now. Well, both are all underclassmen in there, and that's a pretty good basketball team. You could play in most leagues with that team on the floor right there. Iowa had 10 players. Horton didn't expect that pass, then drew the foul from McPherson. Iowa had 10 players average 11 or more minutes a game. That's amazing. It is. The player with the most minutes is, uh, well, I think, 28. D.J. Armstrong had 28. And uh, Roy Marble had 30. Other than that, it was really spread around. First, the foul was on Reeves. It was an Iowa foul. Reeves first and the third on the team. Not McPherson and Santa Clara. Jens Gordon from way outside gets around Horton, goes hard to the hole, and slams it in. Gordon has 13 points in the contest. Iowa's lead is now 64-34. Jeff Moe. Down low to Bill Jones. Now Jordan's a sophomore. Lee. Done some good things in this game today. Marbles a sophomore. He only looks like Jordan. <laughs> and they share the same number. Roy Marble makes no secret about the fact that he admires Michael Jordan tremendously. Physically, they're similar, about the same size. Well, the comparison is made on the things they do for their team. Horton Marble doesn't him. jump as high. Bill Jones went up with the rebound and then drew a foul, so he's headed for the free throw line. As Tom Frame makes the call. And this one's against, I'll say, Apia, his fourth, his third foul, and fifth on the team. In fact, to Roy Marble, he, uh, you know, he, he's not as big as uh, Michael Jordan, not quite as quick, but he does all the same kinds of things, and that's where they, they make the comparison. Only a sophomore. He's going to be uh, the real player in the Big Ten next year. Did not make the All-Big Ten team. Was a second-team selection by UPI and uh, both AP. Bill Jones missing the first of two. He's now two out of three from the line. He's a very versatile player. Bruce, he plays both guards in the small forward position. You pointed out that he plays the point at 6'7". He gets his own rebound here. Goes up, can't hit. Big scramble on the floor. Horton tried to fire it up. He missed. Here's Michael Reeves picking up the loose ball. Mo can't save it. And Santa Clara will take over, trailing by 30 with 13.20 to go in the ball game. Tom Davis looks on, and I'm sure he doesn't want Iowa to get out of control, even with his second unit on the floor. No, he can start thinking about uh, Sunday. And uh, he plays UTEP. Uh, UTEP's going to try to do the same kind of things for Santa Clara. They've got a little better quickness than Santa Clara. They're not as big and physical. Mitch Burley for three. Iowa now leads 64 to 37. Well, Burley's our best three-point shooter. He comes off the bench and gives him almost 10 points a game. Started earlier in the year. Rugged kid, about 6'4", moves well. That's his 26th three-pointer of the season. He shoots him at about 30%. You like that rule, Bruce? Well, I do. I like it. The more I watch it, uh, and I like it right where it is. Coach should have talked about moving it back. I think if you move it back, it won't be as much of a factor. Horton's shot is partially blocked, but Jones right underneath goes up, misses, and draws the foul. Statistics at the half during that first half of the season show that teams shoot the three-pointer about eight times, and they make it about three, or 38% is the shooting percentage. To duplicate that on two-point shots, you have to shoot 58%. So I like it. It's a factor. There's Craig McPherson's first foul on Jones' rebound. Jones going to the free-throw line, and Dan Weiss comes back in along with uh, Brian Moody for Santa Clara. McPherson heads to the sideline, and uh, so does Chris Lane. We just saw what Iowa does. When you're not shooting well, if you've got a rebounding team like Iowa, it doesn't matter too much if you're not shooting very well because you're going to get enough shots that it's all going to equalize out, especially when you get the kind of shots they're getting here. Just keep it up, keep it up, put it back in, put back as they call them. Jones now three out of five, well, as you see, from the line. And a 65% free throw shooter going into this afternoon's encounter. On that last sequence, you got a chance to see Iowa with four white shirts on the board. They send four people to the offensive board. Some teams will only send three. But they send four and rely on one to give them some defensive balance. 
So Iowa continues to extend their lead. Here's Mitch Bur Burley for three again. A little hard. Jeff Moe. He's a good three-point shooter. To Bill Jones, back to Moe. The best in the Big Ten. Michael Reed. Al Lorenzen. Now you see some baseline screen. There goes Lorenzen down deep on the baseline. Offensive. The only player we really haven't seen that plays quite a bit for Iowa is Hill. He's coming in now, and uh, he's a football player that couldn't make the football team. So they took his 225 pounds and made a basketball player out of him. Fits the Iowa mold. 6'6", six, six, about 225, and can really move. So the offensive foul a moment ago. Of course, when Hill went out for football, he got hurt the first or second right. day. He's, he's got that football player built. Dan Weiss off balance. Banks it in off the board. Santa Clara now trails 66 to 39 with 11.40 to go in the contest. Well, Weiss has been a little quiet. Of course, he doesn't match up with the Iowa players as well as uh, Gordon does, so he's at a little disadvantage. They need his 10-point average and uh, his rebounding. They haven't been able to get it in this ballgame. Lorenzen. That's Mo. Well, there's the flex, as we call it again. Both teams run a lot of it. That's as much flex as we've seen all year by two teams playing each other. Hill couldn't take the rebound away from Apia, and that's say on the run to Burley. Mitch Burley has five points in the ball game, and Santa Clara now down 66 to 41 with less than 11 minutes to go in the contest. What kind of vibrations do you have on the Arizona Texas El Paso matchup? Well, we saw Wyoming beat Virginia at the uh, first round. West Regional up in Salt Lake City, so that makes uh, UTEP a look a little better right to start with. UTEP, uh, really Wyoming, beat, Wyoming beat UTEP in the tournament uh, semifinal game to earn the right to the NCAA. UTEP's quick, not quite as big as Arizona. They'll be quicker all around. I think it'll be an excellent match. The quickness, they penetrate, take the ball to the basket. That's the thing that Arizona doesn't handle real well. Burley from three-point range again. Second three-pointer for Mitch Burley, who has eight points in the ball game and Santa Clara now down 68 44 just over 10 minutes to go in the contest Mo taking the ball hard to the basket if you're going to catch up uh, you need to shoot the three-pointer and it's interesting talking to Carol Williams he wasn't really an advocate of the three-point shot in fact he just even wasn't even concerned about it early in the year and he indicated as the year went along as they got into the tournament they run a little more of their offense to help the three-point shot and Burley is their designated three-point shooter and I'm sure they're going to run offense the rest of this ball game, and they're going to try to catch up and get the ball to him, so we might see some good shooting outside. You saw Roland Horvath, who just checked in for Santa Clara, replacing Gordon. Jeff Moe is the man on the free throw line, first time today, and he hits Santa Clara over the limit. Moe with seven points in the ball game. He's been termed the best sixth man in the U.S. Well, he is. Uh, I don't know if you can really call him a sixth man. He started for two years, so he started a couple games this year. That's great to have that kind of people coming off the bench. But Santa Clara now is playing a smaller club. Uh, they played this way quite a bit during the year, a little quicker. And let's see if they set up again and preset or run some special sets to set up the three-point play. Right and there it comes again. Iowa's 70 to 44 lead is their biggest margin of the ball game. Burley kicks it off to Chris Lane. Lane has a three-pointer. Well, they're their two best three-point shooters. Morgan gets it right back, a two-pointer for Iowa as he drives the baseline effectively. Michael Morgan with a field goal to give Iowa a 72 to 47 advantage. And we have nine and a half to go on the game. Looks like the rest of the Iowa athletes. They can all if they run didn't have jump. numbers, you probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. No shot! No shot! That basket is waved off. Except for Armstrong, who's only 6'2", and maybe Morgan. But other than that, they come from the same kind of mold. Quick, agile, about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 Of course, Bill Jones just fouled Brian Moody. That's his third foul. And before Moody can go to the free throw line, we'll take a timeout. 9.27 to play in the ball game. Timeout on the court with the score. Iowa 72, Santa Clara 47. We'll be right back. Along with Bruce. 
Bruce Larson, I'm Pete Solomon at McHale Center on the campus of the University of Arizona in Tucson, where Iowa leading Santa Clara 51 to 22 at halftime has extended their lead to 72 to 47. But Santa Clara is shooting better uh, in these last uh, seven minutes of this second half. They're up to 45 percent. That's close to their team average. From long range, Moody misses, gets the rebound, goes hard to the basket, misses, and his quarterback gets the rebound. He's tied up, and the arrow points to Santa Clara. In fact, Santa Clara has hit 11 of their last 13 shots, so they're really coming back uh, with a vengeance. And three of those have been three pointers by Lane and two by Burley. Horvath gets the ball to Chris Lane. He kicks it out to Burley. And the ball is tipped out, and Santa Clara will get it back. Both teams still going to the board hard, and nobody can fault Santa Clara's effort, though they've been behind since virtually the outset. Santa Clara's had a great reputation through the years of being the hard hitting uh, board club, and the kind of players they've turned out and have gone to the pros have indicated that. Dennis Autry is a good example up in Phoenix where you work. You've seen him through the years. The Santa Clara players seem to come from that same kind of mold. Six, eight, nine, big, strong kids. Kurt Rambis with the Lakers. Right, and they've got a few of those coming up here. But I think you should notice their offense. Burley, Lane, playing on the three-point perimeter line. Horton with the interception. Here's Michael Reeves with the ball. Lorenzen to Bill Jones. Ed Horton rolls to the hoop. He has his third field goal, six points in the contest. And I will lead 74 to 47. Did you think it was going to be like this? No, I didn't really didn't, but I was concerned about Iowa's quickness and uh, Jens Gordon from short range. Iowa leading by a score of 74 to 49. McHale Center on the campus of the University of Arizona is the scene of this first round West Regional Contest. And Iowa extending a 51 to 22 halftime lead is pounding Santa Clara, the WCAC tournament champion, 74 to 49 with 827 to go in the ball game. Along with Bruce Larson, I'm Pete Solomon. Ed Horton is on the free throw line for the first time today. Iowa's press, Santa Clara's inability to take care of the basketball, two of the biggest factors in this ball game, don't you think, Bruce? I think you're right, Pete, exactly. And guys like this guy right here, Horton, boy, he's gonna be a dominant player in the next couple of years. You gotta like his physical size and strength at 6'8", about 225 or 30, and can, can, can run like Marble or Armstrong or any kind of quick player you wanna find. That's Roland Horvath of the Broncos. A three-point attempt way off and the rebound to Lorenzen. Miss Burley had a pair of three-pointers earlier this half, and now Reeves is held by Jens Gordon as he goes hard to the basket. Second foul on Gordon, and the Santa Clara team already over the limit. Carol Williams' face mirrors just about what's happened here today. Carol Williams, great guy. Great job. Quality person. Good basketball player himself. At San Jose State, he's still among the yeah. scoring leaders, all-time scoring leaders there. Was an alternate on the 1960 Olympic team, and there were some pretty good players on that 1960 Olympic team. He was behind a guy by the name of Jerry West and a guy by the name of Oscar Robinson. That's two pretty good players to uh, try to beat out for a spot on that Olympic team. Indeed. Michael Reeves on the free throw line for the Hawkeyes is an excellent defender. He's in his 21st game of the season. All Georgia in high school. He's from Milledgeville, Georgia. He hits the pair, and the Hawkeyes extend their lead to 78 to 49. Just over eight minutes to go in the contest. Well, early in the 70s and the late 60s, Santa Clara really had a powerhouse. About three years in a row. That's Moody again. Rebound to Reeves, and he's on the run. Oh, Chris Lane breaks up the play as Bill Jones was going hard to the basket, but uh, Lane the mask last, or rather Jones the last man to hit it, and so Santa Clara takes over, trailing 78-49, less than eight minutes to go in the ball game. But Santa Clara at that time in the West Coast basketball, it was UCLA that dominated the national scene. You didn't hear about Santa Clara. They never got out of the West Coast, but they had excellent teams. Jens Gordon now has 17, and Santa Clara trails 78 to 51. Now we'll see the three play from Iowa. Lorenzen in the painted area goes up hard and scores. Al Lorenzen at 6'9 and 235 used all of that muscle to gain his third field goal of the afternoon. Well, Iowa went, ran what we call a preset. They ran a special play before they would move into their flex. They've been running pretty much just the flex, the baseline flex. 
Down low to White. He's fouled as he goes to the basket. He was sandwiched between Lorenzo and Horton. And we'll see it again here. Well, Santa Clara is an inside team. They got to get the ball inside and use some of their muscle. And here they do a good job of getting the ball inside the big Weiss. He hasn't been able to get the shot away. He's on the foul line. Both teams shooting pretty well from the foul line. Santa Clara 10 for 13. Iowa 15 for 18. Saw Tom Davis talking to some of his starters. This is Dan Weiss on the free throw line where he's 0 for 1. This is his 71st career start. He wants to teach and coach. Kind of racket is that to get into, Bruce? Well, I don't know. I'd probably advise him otherwise. Teaching's great, you know, and uh, you get to do that as you're, <laughs> you're coaching. But he's a junior. He's going to be back. So as you look at this ball club, uh, the kind of personnel they got, they'll be tough in the West Coast Athletic Conference. Lorenzen is wide open. And now Lorenzen has his fourth field goal, and Iowa has an 82 to 53 lead. And I think this is the first time the WAC or the West Coast Athletic Conference has had uh, two teams in the NCAA playoffs. First time in five years, I believe. San Diego nipped by Auburn last night. What a rebound by Reeves. Michael Reeves is 6'3", but he went up high to grab it. And then as he charges to the basket, he's fouled by Mitch Burley. So he's headed to the free throw line. Looks like he walked a little bit before he got that uh, charge kind of out of control. Well, let's see how good an official you are. One, two, yeah, I think so, before he hit him. Foul on Mitch Burley is his second. Santa Clara has been over the limit for about four minutes. And Michael Reeves in a one and one situation. He had 10 points against Northwestern this year. That's his career high. And he has seven in this afternoon's encounter. Five here in the second half. Iowa's depth is going to carry him a long way in the tournament, don't you think? But the coach, that's one thing you like to have. And the way they play, they almost have to have that kind of depth. Chasing up and down the court for 40 minutes. Now Lorenzen on the sideline gets a nice rush. He did a fine job. And I think if you play like the way Santa Clara does, then you can get by with less Because depth. in general, they're, they're not as up-tempo in their style of play. Right. Chris Lane. Rebound to Ed Horton, and he's fouled immediately by Brian Moody. The foul on Moody is his fourth. And another one-and-one one situation. 6-18 to go in the ball game, and for Carroll Williams, I don't think this one can end fast enough. No, well, probably not, but I think he can start thinking about next year. He's got a young basketball team, and no matter what happens to you in the tournament, this is a plus for you. So you have to look at it that way. And that'll help with recruiting. And they'll, these players are all going to be back, so they know what it takes to win in this kind of a tournament. Ed Horton misses the front end of the one and one, and then Brian Moody tips it out. So Iowa will get it back. Very disappointed Santa Clara bench, but certainly nobody can fault their effort. They really came out and played hard, though I think you'll agree they were a little bit undermanned this afternoon. Well, the quickness, overall team quickness, was really a factor. Horton scores and he's fouled. Ed Horton with a power move to the basket, giving Iowa an 86 to 53 lead. That's certainly worth another. Well, that takes you a little courage. If you want to stop, get in front of that guy and try to take a charge or stop him from going to the basket, uh, you've got to be a pretty good sized individual yourself. 230 pounds going hard over the middle of that left hand short hook. He clears a lot of people out of the way as he moves. Horton completes the three point play after Jens Gordon committed his third foul. And Iowa's lead is 87 to 53. Six minutes to go on the contest. That's Sophia. They, they list Jens Gordon at 220 pounds, but when you look at him next to Horton, I think Gordon's weight is in his legs, though. He's really getting well-developed legs. Dan Weiss is headed for the free throw line. They list Horton at 225, only five pounds more, and they're the same height. But Horton almost looks twice as big as Jordan, upper from the hips to the upper body. Foul is on Lorenzo, and Weiss hits. And has another upcoming. We've talked about the Iowa bench often. 41 points off the Iowa bench. They've almost outscored uh, Santa Clara from the bench. 
Bill Jones brings the ball back for the Hawkeyes, who continue to enjoy a big margin. Al Lorenzen misses a three-point attempt, and Jeff Moe inside puts it up, and he's fouled. I say Apia was there, and he commits the foul. His That could be his best. His fourth. Santa Clara has 10 points uh, off the bench in comparison to Iowa's 41. And six of them on uh, two three-pointers by Burley. That's right. Mo, an excellent free-throw shooter, now three for three from the line. He has nine points in the contest, averaging almost 12 a game. And Mitch Burley comes back into the Santa Clara lineup to lend his long-range shooting ability, and that's Sophia heading for the sideline. Mo hits the pair. Iowa leads 89 to 54. A little more than five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. That's Gordon. Intercepted by Mo as Moody couldn't handle the pass. That's Jones. Mo tried to get a lean in the air. Great drive by Jeff Mo. Iowa leads 91 to 54. Their biggest win this season, a 48-point margin over Delaware in the Amano Hawkeye Classic. Well, they won four tournaments. <laughs> and Weiss has the rebound. And now it's end-to-end -end action. Nice pass to Gordon. And he gets it to roll. Then Gordon with 19 points, averaging 10.6 going into the ball game. All the Iowa starters are really giggling at Horton missing that slam dunk. Looked like he ran out of gas as he was going to take off. Coach uh, Tom Davis oh. even got a kick out of that. Bill Jones missing. Ed Horton held the rim, so Horton will get a technical foul. 4.37 to play in the game. Ed Horton grabs the rim, as we'll see here. And then there'll be a personal foul after this. Well, the shooter, if you shoot the ball, you can grab the rim. But he was just up there in traffic and wanted to let himself come down easy. Ed Horton on the sideline taking a rest. And now James Gordon goes to the free throw line for Santa Clara in a one and one situation. Three for three from the line so far. Well, if you're worried about Iowa having any size in the next coming years, uh, there's Jewel out there. Mark Jewel, 6'9". He's only a freshman, a true freshman. Uh, Jepson, the red shirt, he's about 7'2", I believe. That's right. He was, uh, came out of Bowbells, North Dakota. Carol Williams looks on, and now Gordon's going to shoot the technical. Same kind of body that uh, Loa has. And he's had quite a bit of playing time during the year, so he might get some. he like to spot in another year. There's a timeout on the court with a score. Iowa 91, Santa Clara 59. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Mikhail Center on the campus of the University of Arizona is the scene. Iowa 1-0 on this floor. We mentioned earlier they beat Arizona during the regular season here. Santa Clara has never played here, and I don't think they'll leave with very happy memories of at least this encounter. And the Iowa cheerleaders will see Santa Clara put the ball in play at midcourt when play is resumed, and Craig McPherson will do the honors. Well, with four minutes to go, Santa Clara's uh, at 41%, 42. They've been below 40 most of the night. And they're 48% on the year. Right. So that's hurt them. Chris Lane misses. And Jepson has the rebound, and he's fouled. Weiss and Lane were trying to wrestle the ball away from the seven-foot, one-inch freshman, second-year freshman. Coach Williams was concerned about the rebounding. Jepson missed the free throw, but Iowa was in the lane early anyway. So Santa Clara will put the ball in play with 4.27 to go in the ball game. The Broncos trailing 91 to 59. Tom Davis looking on. Lane tried to enter the ball low to McPherson. And the ball was kicked out, so a new 45 seconds on the shot clock. You like that shot clock, don't you, Bruce? I do, yeah. I think it hasn't been an effect in the game. It has been none, none at all. Uh, the only time you see it, uh, maybe if you got a 10-point lead with three or four minutes to go, you run the clock down to 45 seconds and throw up a shot. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, three-pointer by Curley is good. 
And Mick Foley has his third three-pointer of the contest in 11 points in the ball game. He got at least 91.62. We've got a chance to work in Mexico quite a bit. They have a 30-second clock, and I think 30 seconds or 35. Hill. Ken Hill traveled. Hill. And uh, after the walking violation, Santa Clara will take over. Down 91.62. 3.51 to go in the ball game. Florida and North Carolina State involved in a tight ball game with the Gators leading 33 to 30 at intermission. Jepson was the last to touch it, so Santa Clara will put the ball in play on the baseline. The Gators had a great year this year, Bruce, but North Carolina State, they really get, get after it in March, don't they? They do. Ben Gordon. And that's kind of an interesting matchup. It is. Gordon's a Spent years coaching at North Carolina State. That's right. Jens Gordon has tied his career high with 24 points, and Iowa's lead 91 to 64 with 324 to go. Iowa will retain possession of the ball. So Jens Gordon, a fine player, and the 24 points, as we said, equals his high. Right, but he hasn't been a factor on the board. He's only got five rebounds, and he's been averaging seven. Les Jepson. Iowa leads it 93-64. Just over three minutes remaining to be played in the game. Down low, that's White. Whacked by Jepson. Plus, Jepson commits his first foul. And a two-shot opportunity upcoming. And incidentally, uh, Iowa over the limit with three minutes to go in the ball game. Seven minutes after Santa Clara committed there for a 17 foul. Dan Weiss's dad played for Santa Clara. He has one more coming and eight points in the ball game. Things look pretty relaxed on the Iowa bench, Bruce. I think so. They're looking forward to Sunday. They can start thinking about that. UTEP and Arizona as they play the next ball game, trying to figure out who their matchups are going to be. And that's Fallon. a little advantage for them. Fallon Burley in the backcourt is uh, Santa Clara trying to apply the press. That's his third and to one and one upcoming. Less than three minutes to go in the ball game. I've been impressed with Santa Clara trying to run their three-point offense. And uh, again, that's something that can be beneficial to them as they prepare for another year. And Burley, a good three-point shooter and the lane. And then if they don't have it, they've been going inside. But they've been looking for the three-pointer first. Dan Weiss leaves. Moody joins him on the bench. And Larry Rask is the man number 21 who replaces him. Meanwhile, Michael Reeves is on the free throw line in a one and one situation. And he has nine, his ninth point. He's five for five from the line. And if he hits this, he'll tie his career high. He had 10 points against Northwestern this season. Well, see, Santa that. Clara is scoring almost uh, right their average now, 67. This ball game had to be in that figure, 60. Hill's rebound, not good. Jens Gordon collects the board for Santa Clara. For Santa Clara to have a chance to win, I felt as they started the ball game. Larry Rapp out of Portland. Morgan steals the ball from Lane. Michael Morgan all along. <laughs> Iowa leads it 96 to 66. Their biggest lead had been 36. Less than two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Gordon down low. Oh, God. Jepson pulls down the rebound ahead to Morgan, and he has only Burley to beat. And he travels. So Burley got back in a hurry, and maybe that's a testimony to how hard Santa Clara is playing in an impossible situation. He traveled before the layup. Timeout on the floor. Iowa leading 96 to 66, and we'll be right back. We wish to take this opportunity to thank NCAA Basketball Committee Representative Cedric Dempsey, Tournament Manager Dick Barnes, and Tournament Media Coordinator Butch Henry, Santa Clara Athletics Director Tom O'Connor, Head Coach Carol Williams, Sports Information Director Mike McNulty. And from Iowa, we thank Athletic Director Bump Elliott, 
head basketball coach Tom Davis, his fine staff, the reception by Chris Lane here, sports information director George Wine. Transportation arrangements made through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. Well, it looks like Iowa's going to move on. They've been in the NCAA tournament eight of the last nine years. That's right. They have a 13 and 12 record. They've been to the final four three times. Coach Lute Olson, who's now the Arizona coach, took them in 1980 when they finished fourth. In 1956, they finished second. So they've had a good uh, NCAA appearance record. Chris this Lane for three. Lane second three-pointer cuts the deficit to 98-72. Iowa has the lead and the ball. <laughs> Michael Morgan going hard to the basket, commits an offensive foul. Carol Williams sends John Turner into the ball game. Tom Davis relaxes on the bench after his 28th win as the Iowa head coach and number 302 as a head coach. Well, this stat might indicate what kind of a game it's been. Iowa has nine dunks. Santa Clara has one. These guys will be back next year, though, Jim Gordon and company. <laughs> That's Darren Underwood having the ball slapped away by Michael Reeves during the final minute of the ball game. And he loses the handle on it. That's Aaron with the ball. David Aaron pulls up at the free throw line and Jepson fouls him from behind. Second foul on Jepson. And David Aaron will go to the free throw line. He's 16 for 28 this season. He's been in every game but one, but he doesn't play too much. Well, this is the kind of game the coaches really didn't want to get into, especially the winning coach as they prepare for another game. It doesn't bother Santa Clara too much. They're done for the year, but uh, you don't want your players scrambling and rambling and throwing the ball away, and uh, that can carry over for you in the next ball game. So, I'm sure Coach Davis, uh, a little concerned. He wants this thing to end as quick as possible. I'm sure Coach Williams agrees. Aaron hits the free throw for his first point of the afternoon. Santa Clara now trails 98-73 with 50 seconds to go. Well, Iowa's been over the 100 mark seven times. Their high is 105 against UT Irvine. Their low was 66 points. And they'll have a couple of possessions, including one right now, to try to equal that. Santa Clara pressing all over the floor. Morgan open in front court. Jewel. Rebound, Kent Hill. That's Morgan. Too hard. Gets in. And the corner gets the rebound. He's fouled by Morgan. Iowa wants gold tanning until they get that 100. Yep. 35 seconds to go in the ball game. John Turner will go to the free throw line where he's one for six this year. Bruce, people are never satisfied. Those Iowa fans want 100, don't they? Well, basketball fans are like that. You know, that's, uh, when a ball game's won, that's the only hallmark or benchmark they can use. Kent Hill. And he's fouled. He'll go to the line for a pair and a chance to reach the century mark. That puts a little pressure on him. He's going to have to make them both. And he's only a 61% free throw shooter. 27 seconds to go in the ball game. A very happy Iowa bench. Even Tom Davis is smiling. Good low-key guy. Darren Underwood committed his first foul, sending Hill to the line for a pair. He plays both forwards and the center position, and he hits. He shoots better from the field almost than he does in the free throw line. He's a 60% shooter with that great strength he's got. He Bill really looks a lot like Horton. Her body builds are almost identical. You saw Bill Jones cheer him on. He missed the second one, and Darren Underwood has the rebound. How many of his shots from the field, though, come from 15 feet? They're probably all inside. John Turner to Darren Underwood. He goes up, scores, and he's fouled. Jepson commits his third, and Underwood has his first field goal and goes to the line with an opportunity to complete a three-point play with his team, Santa Clara, trailing to 76 and 15 seconds remaining. Well, Jepson doesn't have the kind of body that uh, the starting Iowa inside players have. If they'd have hit Horton like that or Lohas, nothing would have happened. Underwood has had one start against the Nevada Reno. And he can't hit. Scramble for the rebound, picked up by Morgan. Michael Morgan shoots, misses. The jam is not good by Hill. Four seconds. 
Aaron. Hawkeyes came in with 27 victories, and they certainly appeared to be every bit as good as advertised. Downing his crappy Santa Clara ball club. We'll be back with more from the Kale Center in Tucson right after these messages.